In this video, we're going to take a look at the Model Mania Design Challenge from 2006. If you're unfamiliar with Model Mania, it's a design challenge held every year at SolidWorks World where users are given a drawing similar to this and they're tasked with creating the part both as quickly and as accurately as possible. Now if that wasn't enough, when they're done, they're given an additional drawing with several changes that need to be made to the part. So before we dive in creating this part, which we're going to look at a couple of, uh, variations of, let's take a look at the drawing. The first thing you'll notice is in this top view, the, this elongated shape is comprised mostly of, or exclusively of arcs, one on the right, one on the left, and in particular this one in the center isn't given a radius value. It's just tangent to the other two arcs. Also, down in the bottom view, you'll notice that this shape has arcs on both the backside and the front of the part, and that shape follows across the top of the part. Then there's this dome feature, which can also be seen here in the bottom view, but also in the upper left-hand view with a radius of 30 millimeters. Finally, the entire part is shelled out, and then there's a series of ribs in the bottom. So let's go ahead and dive into SolidWorks and look at how to tackle this. I'm going to start with that first feature, as it really makes up and contains some of the most complex features in this design. I'm going to go ahead and start by capturing the shape from the right-hand side of the part, or what's actually in the front view there. I'm going to call it the right-hand side. So I'm going to start with a center point arc. Let's go ahead and start that over. Let's actually mention a few things as I do this. The first thing I want to mention is with a center point arc, you can go ahead and just capture that radius right away and start drawing that arc. Then I'm going to go ahead and transition directly into creating those two other tangent arcs. By using the tangent arc tool, I automatically capture the tangent relationship between each of those. The next thing I want to do is ensure that not only the centers, but also the ends of this part are all horizontal to each other. So by selecting them all with the control key, I can then choose make horizontal. Then I also want to make sure that this point represents the quadrant of this arc. So to do that, I'm going to make that vertical to the center point. Then all I need to do is add a few of the remaining dimensions. For example, the length of the part was 92 and the radius out here on the left was 20 millimeters. As soon as I add that, the part's fully defined. But we need one more thing. We need to draw a line across the bottom to close this profile off. And I save this for last because this line is going to play a critical role in one of the next features we create. But let's go ahead and look at extruding this. The width of that feature is 32 millimeters, but you'll notice I'm going to set its end condition to midplane. By doing so, I ensure that the sketch always stays down the center of the part. That's something else we're going to use on the next feature. So let's talk about that next feature. I want to capture that contoured shape across the top of this part. And this is a perfect place to use the swept cut. You'll notice when you create any sweep in SolidWorks, you need both a profile and a path. So let's look at how we'll create those. The path conveniently can be reused from the very first feature we created. So we'll turn that sketch on so that we can reference it later. Let's go ahead and create the profile, however. It shares the same radius as that outside arc. So again, I'm going to use a center point arc, and I'm going to go ahead and snap to the center and just create this. Now, I want this to fall on the end point of this arc, so I'm going to select them both with a control key. And as opposed to simply choosing coincident, I'm going to choose midpoint. It's a little more intelligent in that it captures the symmetry between the two endpoints. That way, I only have to add this coincident relationship once over here on the side. Now, when you use a swept cut, you do need a closed profile, so let's go ahead and close this off. I'm going to go ahead and just box this in by drawing some geometry here and then I'm just going to give it an arbitrary value. I'm going to dimension from this line to the tangency of this arc. Now you'll notice when I hold the shift key it makes it really easy to grab that tangency and we'll just give it a value of 5. It really doesn't matter what this value is, it's just going to be used to remove the material. So let's go ahead and close that sketch and now look at the swept cut feature itself. When I choose the command, you'll notice that the sketch I just created, because it was still selected, automatically gets chosen as the profile, which is what we want. So let's activate and choose the path. 
Now I mentioned we wanted to reuse the sketch from the first feature, but notice when I select it what happens. SolidWorks chooses the entire sketch, including that line we mentioned a moment ago across the bottom. Now we don't want to cut the bottom of this part, however. So how do we go about this? Well, let's clear this selection and take a look in the right mouse click menu. Here you'll find a convenient tool called the Selection Manager. It allows you to choose just specific pieces of geometry from the sketch. This way we don't have to include that bottom line. You'll also notice when I was selecting, there's a pop-up to automatically select things, such as uh, tangent arcs. I just would have, be careful with that. Sometimes you'll grab more geometry than you expect. So let's go ahead and confirm that as our path in the preview shows us, it's going to give us exactly what we need. So let's go ahead and press OK. An alternative method you could have used for that was creating that as a surface sweep and then doing a cut with surface. I covered this in last week's Model Mania contest, so I don't want to dwell on it here today. Let's go ahead and look at creating the domed shape now that I'll also create from the right hand uh, plane. And this can be created a variety of ways. One of the easier ways to do this is to just simply draw a circle and then draw two lines and trim away this excess material from the side here. Then when you go to dimension it, it'll automatically ask for the radius. In this case, it's 30 millimeters. Now say for example, you dimensioned it while it was a full circle. You would have been asked to give a diameter dimension. Keep in mind, anytime you create a radius or a diameter, you always have the option to switch the type of display. In this case, I changed it to, di to diameter, but I'm going to change it back. So we have this half or quarter circle, I'm sorry, and we want to go ahead and just choose to revolve this. So I'm going to choose Revolve Boss. Now, in previous videos in this series, the preview automatically appears, and that's usually because I have a center line in the sketch. In this case, I didn't. That's okay. SolidWorks just needs any straight line to act as an axis of revolution. So in this case, we'll just choose the vertical line. It's just not automatically selected because it couldn't determine which one of these two we wanted to use. So there we go. We have that feature. At this point, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how the order in which you create your features can have an impact on your design because that's actually one of the other important aspects of this design. So if we go back to the drawing, you'll notice that this part is shell. It also has a series of fillets on the top of this part. So let's go into SolidWorks. Let's start with the shell. I'm going to go ahead and choose the shell command and just give it my um, wall thickness of four millimeters and we're going to choose to deselect the bottom face. Now when I do this, you'll notice I'm left with a sharp edge here and a sharp edge here. Where on the drawing, it should actually include the radius from the top fillets. Well, an easy way to do this in SolidWorks is you don't have to delete a feature. You can actually grab this bar at the end of your feature manager tree and just roll back before the shell was ever created. Now you'll notice it's not there, but we haven't deleted it, so we haven't lost anything we've done. So let's now look at the fillets on the top. Again, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and choose some edges here, but I'm going to keep in mind this order. So I'm going to start with these two edges and say OK, and then let's create an additional fill. I'm just going to grab this face and press OK as well. So you can see the fillet blend that we have here, but if we look at the drawing, it's actually different. You'll notice that there's more faces than what we have in the SolidWorks file. So let's go back to SolidWorks. Why did ours turn out different? Well, this is a case where the order in which you create the fillets can have an impact on the overall shape and design because the second fillet has to blend with the first that was there. So this is a great way when you're designing parts to get exactly the look you're after. So I've got them in the correct order now. What about that shell feature? Let's roll the part back over and then go into the feature manager tree and simply roll that rollback bar down. Here you can see that because the shell happens after the fillets, those uh, outside fillets are offset properly. Now you may be wondering where are the fillets on these sharp edges here? Well that's because these radius were four millimeters and the wall thickness is four millimeters. And that's okay because we're going to be uh, creating those using a different style of fillet in just a moment. In fact, let's go ahead and get to work on that. The next thing I want to create, however, is going to be this rib structure on the bottom. And there's several ways to tackle this. But I want to highlight some of the advantages of the rib feature feature itself. So the first thing you'll notice is that these ribs are four millimeters off from the bottom of the part. So I'm going to choose my top plane 
and I'm going to create an offset plane, four millimeters into the part. On this plane, I'm going to create a sketch and we're going to start creating that shape. Now, I know that I'm going to be using the rib feature, and one of the advantages of this feature is the ability to work with uh, line geometry. Now, in this case, we're given an inside diameter of 12 millimeters, and then there's three spurs that come off from here. Now, I'm going to draw a line, and I can snap it out to the end here if I want, but I want to leave that not snap to show a point here in a little bit. I need three of these. Now I could create a pattern later on, but likewise you can actually create a circular pattern right inside of a sketch. Very similar to a feature pattern, you can select your instances, and there are some options here for dimensioning the radius or the angle between them. I'm going to leave those off, but you will notice that makes the sketch underdefined, and that's because the center point actually needs a relationship to the center of that arc. As soon as I do that, it's fully defined. So what happens here? I want to create a rib feature. I'm going to go ahead and turn the display of that plane off to make this a little bit more clear. And I'm going to choose rib. What rib does is it allows you to specify the thickness of a rib and a direction that you want it to go. In this case, down into the part. Here's the problem. Because these lines represent the center line, uh, it creates a problem for this dimension. Notice here that this 12 millimeters is actually meant to be the ID of this part. So it does create a bit of a challenge. There's two ways to solve this. You can create two rib features or you can manually do the math in here and you can just change this to be 16 millimeters. Not ideal, uh, but again, you could have created two features to accomplish the exact same results. But now let's go ahead and take a look at our rib feature. Again, we'll change this to four millimeters, and you always want to make sure that that arrow is pointed in the proper direction. Now look what happens. See how the preview only goes out so far as the lines? Well, the rib feature is actually really unique in that it will always extend all the way until it finds material to terminate against. So that makes the rib very powerful. The normal extrusion wouldn't be able to do that inside of SOLIDWORKS. So as I mentioned, you could have done it the other way. One of the other methods you could have looked at was doing this with a combination of ribs and extrusions. This time, however, instead of having an offset plane, I'm going to just create this on the bottom of the part. And I'm going to work with our 12 millimeter dimension. No math involved, no offsetting the value. This time, however, I'm going to go ahead and choose to create a boss extrusion. I'm going to reverse the direction, and I'm going to ensure that it terminates up to next. Notice in the preview there that it terminates on the bottom face of that part. But you may be thinking, that's nothing like the drawing. Well, SOLIDWORKS offers some really powerful tools right here in the extrusion command. The first is the ability to capture that offset up in the from option. We're going to choose offset and set it to four millimeters. You want to make sure the direction is offsetting the correct way. So in this case, we flipped it. But then what about it being thin? Here we can enable the thin feature option in SOLIDWORKS and set the appropriate wall thickness. Now, when I go ahead and create this, you'll notice that the inside radius here is in fact or the diameter is 12 millimeters. Then I would create this still using ribs just like we did previously. Let's go ahead and look down on this. And I, like I mentioned before, you don't have to actually terminate the line to the outside. I am going to, however, create a circular pattern again to do this. And like before, I'm just going to snap that to the center to fully define it. And then we'll go ahead and choose the rib feature. Just as we did before, the direction is set correct, and I press OK. So two slight variations on how you could have created that. There's uh, an infinite variety of ways really to do it, but those are just a handful of those. The next thing we need to consider is the fillets on the inside of this. Now in previous videos, I highlight the differences between selecting edges and selecting faces. Faces, as I've mentioned in the past, allow you to select a lot of geometry in one click, but it's going to take a lot of faces to get everything that we need here. So I'm going to clear this completely. SOLIDWORKS not only allows you to select edges and faces, but also features. Notice in this case, I can expand this feature manager tree 
uh, next to the property manager and actually choose the entire shell. And that captures all those faces on the bottom. But I do need to capture all this inside geometry. So in this case, I'm going to choose the rib feature. And notice how that automatically captured everything by only selecting two features from the feature manager tree. That made that a lot quicker than selecting all those faces. The other nice thing is, is if there's any changes, the features will still be selected in their entirety. So let's go to an isometric view and save this. The next thing we want to look at is phase two. In phase two, there's actually very few changes we need to be concerned with. It's primarily draft. You'll notice here in section AA, we need to add 15 millimeters of draft to the sides of that uh, first shape we created. And then on the inside, we have to add two degrees of draft to all those faces. So let's go back to SolidWorks. This really comes back to the whole uh, order that we created our features. Now if I tried to create draft on the side of this part right now, I'd run into all sorts of problems because of these fillets. Well that's actually easily solved by simply rolling back before the fillets were created. You'll notice in this state I can just choose draft, I'll set my top plane as my pull direction and you'll see the arrow. So imagine a mold around this pulling straight up and then I just choose my faces to draft which are the two outside faces. Once I do that, you'll notice that as I scroll down, the fillets update properly. The shells and all the other features also have no problems. The other draft uh, is on these inside features. Now, we just created draft as a feature, and I technically could roll back before this, and I could do the same thing. But as we just mentioned with the fillets, it will require selecting a lot of faces. Another way to do this is each one of these features has an option to enable draft. We just choose the draft angle, but you'll notice the draft is in the wrong orientation. Here, you can just choose draft outwards to change the direction. Press OK, and that feature is done. We'll also need to do the same thing to the ribs, however. So we'll enable draft, increase it to 2, and make sure that we're drafting outwards. And that quickly, we've made those design changes to this part. Uh, so as you can see, what we really wanted to highlight in this video was how the order in which you create your features has a big impact on any design changes you might make down the road. But it also means that you have the flexibility to go back and make those changes as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and be sure to check out more about SolidWorks World following the links below.